the world's second largest economy is facing tough challenges. Currently, Beijing is in a battle with weakening domestic demand, and this is sending prices lower. Since the beginning of last year, inflation has been on a downward trend diving to the negative mark after October, hitting negative 0.8% in January this year. China has just met its growth target of 5% last year, hitting 5.3% year on year. However, analysts fear that without effective policy intervention, the economy may become entrenched in deflation expectations. What's been dragging down the stock market is uh, real concerns about China's overall economy with the fragile property market really denting wealth perceptions among many consumers, um, making them more cautious of their spending less. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, companies have also been hit by lower demand from overseas because of high interest rates in other countries around the world and more difficult economic conditions. And this has all uh, really conspired uh, against uh, China's economy. The slump in the economy has caused Chinese shares to suffer losses, with the CSI 300 closing at a five-year low only two weeks ago. Authorities in Beijing, pressured by the fall, acted by imposing curbs on short selling. And China's state fund also intervened by vowing to boost stock purchases. This has seen Chinese equities rally with the CSI 300 index rebounding by almost 3%. The CSI 100 index of smaller capitalized companies also soared by a record 8.1%. And the Hang Seng index rose 4%, its biggest gain since July last year. There's been a variety of measures, so regulators have imposed fresh curbs on short selling and also state investors said they were expanding uh, their stock buying. So for example, the sovereign fund are buying more ETFs, exchange uh, traded funds uh, to support the markets. But also there was quite a surprise um, cut to the amount of cash that banks have to keep on hold in reserve as a kind of capital buffer. And this is to try and help boost lending both to households but also to companies as well. Analysts say markets are reacting positively to this pumping of money into stocks. But as China's internal issues of low domestic demand and a struggling property sector continue, China's economic challenges may persist. Emre Bolz, TRT World. For more on this now, we are joined by Liang Ding. He is a microhive economist and strategist. Thank you very much for being with us today. Right, so we saw a big drop in January in the Chinese CPI print. First of all, what are the main drivers behind this figure? Yeah, you, you are right. I think the minus 0.8% uh, was the uh, yeah was the lowest level uh, post global fin uh, global financial crisis. I think um, an easy answer to this question is due to the mismatch of uh, Chinese New Year uh, holiday season. But if even if we look at uh, the months over months inflation number, also. Uh, if you compare it with the, um, the, the, gen the past historical January, January without the holiday season, it is still well below uh, the historical average. I think the reason is for the, for the for the inflation is that actually, actually we have to differentiate between the goods sector and the service sector. In the service sectors, actually we don't have a, a deflation problem. It is more a problem uh, in the in the goods sector. And in the goods sector, there are still two kinds of in deflation. I think there are some, some sectors, actually the demand is actually very strong. If you look at cars or the, or the good sector, or food, for example, but just there, just there too much uh, supply there. And the second um, second sector is, for, for example, is like housing market. Just There's just no, no demand due to the housing market slump uh, starting uh, two and a half years ago. Mm. Interesting. Before we get to the nitty gritty of what this means and what can be done, uh, to make the situation better. Well, can you help us understand why is there such a diverging uh, tendency when it comes to inflation in China, but then in the rest of the world where we are actually seeing problems, uh, opposite problems with the inflation that's actually too high and with central banks trying to counterbalance that? Yeah, I think there's uh, two reasons. The one reason is related to uh, to to the, to the COVID uh, pandemic. During the pandemic year, China exported uh, Goods as a for for staying at home uh, to globally, and China has built up uh, the production uh, capacities. Now this production production capacity 
are, un, are, are unused. And at the same time, also during the pandemic here, uh, China uh, consumer households, they have suffered a lot uh, significant uh, income loss. I think this is one reason. The second reason uh, is just, as I mentioned, uh, related to the housing market, housing market slump uh, starting uh, two and a half years ago. Right, so we did see that the government tried to intervene and put a stimulus in place and essentially pump some money in the stock market to support it. Is that enough? What else can be done by the, the Chinese government and the Chinese authorities to try and uh, prevent this situation from getting worse? Deflation is quite serious. Yeah. Sure, sure. I think, it's, as I say, there are two kinds of reason uh, for the deflation. Uh, in one part, uh, in some sectors, there are just not uh, enough, uh, there, there is sufficient demand, but they are just over supply, over capacities. I think in this part of sector, I think it doesn't make, make, make sense to further stimulate uh, the consumptions. You, you, can, you cannot just buy cars every year, right? So I think it, the effort should be done to reduce the production capacity. This is the one, one part of economy. In other part of economy, like for example, in, in the housing sectors, there are demand, I think, but due to the high, still very high mortgage rate and still very high uncertainties where the buyers can't get their home uh, delivered, uh, then I think the government should at lower interest rates and actually also make sure that the apartments uh, will be delivered.